Hi, today we're going to be looking at the E145S and basic programming of the control board to take two motors, in this case a 400 gram and a underground S800 operator um, to get them up to the first run and having them running them backwards and forwards. Here we have an E145S control board. On the left we have our main power connections. There is a earth, a neutral and a live. To the right of that, we have the one to eight terminal strip that where it will be where the motors will be connected. You always have a greeny, bluey, gray cable connected on the first terminal, and then the brown and the black across two and three. They might be reversed. And there will also be a capacitor which will be wired across the brown and the black for motor one, and then there'll be a separate capacitor for motor two, which is also wired across the brown and the black. Again, with the common being the grey, blue, or actually green cable. Next to that, we then have the 9 to 19 terminal strip. And terminal 9 is an open command, which would be that LED. So if I press the button, that LED would come on once I activate it. The second terminal, terminal 10, is the open B command. That's a partial opening command. So that on a single gate, so they'll open the first gate 50% of the, of the travel. On a double gate, we'll only open the master leaf. Next to it, we have terminal 11. Terminal 11 is a stop circuit, which also corresponds to that LED, to the red LED above it. The fourth terminal long is terminal 12, which is a closing safety, which again corresponds with the, with the red LED. And the same with terminal 13, which is the opening safety, which again corresponds with the LED above it. In order for you to be able to run your e 45 s correctly, you need to have all three of those red LEDs lit up. Otherwise, the system will not work correctly. Moving along, we then have 14, 15, and 16. Now, 14, 15, and 16, there are all commons or negatives. So, commons for switching pairs, or they are negatives for power sources. 17 and 18 are both positive 24 volt DC. Please note the control board only has 24 volt DC. 19 and 20 are your switch output negatives. 21 and 22 are the lock outputs. Now by default, the lock outputs are designed to run a 12 volt AC electric stripe lock. If you need to run anything else, then we recommend to use one of the outputs with a relay attached across, as the outputs that are on 19 and 20 are only rated 100 milliamps, so they, they do require a secondary relay in between. To the right of that, we then have a USB port for upgrading firmware. You then have, going further along, we have the safe, new safety edge inputs. So you have edge one, which is for opening safety edges, and edge two, which is for closing safety edges. By default, they are set as a normal first contact, but they can be set for resistive, uh, direct resistive contact in. Coming along, we then have 23, 24, 25, and 26, which are the limit switch connectors. If you are using most of the used limit switches, they will be wired across. You then have FCC2, FCA2, FCC1, and FCA1. Basically, motor 1 limit switches are 23 and 24, motor 2 limit switches are 25 and 26. And further along, we then have the bus terminal on the right hand side, which is to do with the encoders or the bus beams that you may have attached to it. Going further along the board, we have the connection for your RP868 receiver to five pins. Plugs in down. Make sure that the button is pointing into the control board, not out. Above, we then have the three pin connection for the XF receiver, um, which just plots, uh, goes straight onto there. And below that, we then have our connection for Simply Connect along with the battery connection. Now, programming of an E145S control board it's very easy. There are essentially the three buttons like you normally used to on every single fat control board. There's a plus, a minus, and an F. F is a function button that goes through the different parameters. Plus and minus then changes those parameters according to your requirements. So we are now going to start going through the programming. So if I hold the F button, you see the back-to-back -back Cs, which represents Simply Connect. By default, it's let on set on zero, as we don't have Simply Connect attached. There will be a separate video for Simply Connect at another time. The next parameter is CF, Charlie Foxtrot. Now this represents the default setting of the control board. 
of what it's meant to be doing. The E145 S can actually run both swing gates and the sliding gates at the same um, at different times, depending on what it's configured to. You have setting one is for swing gates, setting two is for sliding gates. So we'll leave it on setting one. If you hold the F button again, you'll see DF. This is your default parameter. If you at the start is always set to Y. The moment you change a parameter further down the programming, this will automatically change to no. Don't change it to a yes unless you want the default of all back to factory defaults. So for now, it will just leave it as it is. If we hold the F button again, you'll see air low for logic. Now, the control board has a variety of different logics. By default, it is set to E for semi-automatic. And that is the recommended logic we suggest when you are doing your first setting up of the units when you check into your runtime to make sure everything's working correctly. You can change this up and down to the usual logics are A for automatic or E for semi-automatic, but there is a variety of different logics available. When you choose an A logic, you will see the PA parameters will come in afterwards, uh, but for now we're going to leave it on E logic for semi-automatic, just so we can control the gate. Press the F button again, you see NN. This is the number of motors. If there's a single gate, you change it to a 1. If this was a this is a double gate, so we're going to use two. Next one is F1. F1 is force being delivered to motor one from the control board. If this is an electromechanical system, then you adjust this force up and down as required uh, by your force testing that you may be using for it. If it is a hydraulic unit like the ones we have here, then the forces must be set to maximum from the control board. Any adjustment is then done on the actual units itself on the torque adjustments. So this is now set to force one to 50, and as a double motor, 25 also goes up to 50. Next parameter is EN for encoders. So at the moment on these motors, we're actually using encoders. So we're gonna change this to a Y. If you weren't using encoders, you simply leave it on no. Now FA is limit switches on the right hand side. Default setting is no. So if you're not using a limit switches, you leave it on the default setting of no. If you were to put it onto say a one, that'll basically tell the unit that when it sees the limit switch being broken, it will stop there. If it's number two, it essentially starts slowing down from that position where it sees the limit switch being broken and then stop against the physical stop. But for us, we're essentially leaving it as off. Next parameters is FC. This is the limit switch on closing. So again, the same options that you would do for opening, but you just adjust it to no for leaving off. The next parameter is SO. This is the safety edge on opening. So default setting is NC, because we have links in place. You can change this to 1R or 2R. 1R basically means there is one resistor on the end of line. 2R means there's two resistors on the end of line. By default, we'll leave it on NC for normally close contact, as this is how we have it configured at the moment. You don't have SC, that's the safety edge on closing. Again, you have the same options, 1R for one resistor end of line, or 2R for two resistors end of line. Essentially, 1R is when it's a single gate, and 2R is when it's a double gate. Again, we'll leave it on normally close so we can bypass it for the links. Next parameter is CD, closing delay. Now, because we have a double gate, the CD parameter automatically comes up. If we have selected only one motor instead of a double gate, then you would not see the CD parameter, as otherwise there's no point showing a parameter which you can't use at the moment. It's the same reason why, because we have left it on semi-automatic logic, you can't see the pause times. Once we activate it and put it into a automatic closing logic, then you'll see a pause time, as you'll see later. We'll leave the closing delay at the default 0, 0.5 seconds. Next parameter is BU. Now this is for the bus terminal connections. In order to register your bus, it's a very simple procedure. It's the same across all of our control boards. You hold a plus and a minus together at the same time. As soon as you see a Y, you can then let go. And then you'll see the three lines again. Now, what do the three lines mean? The middle line represents the bus. It basically says that the bus is on. The top line represents the encoder one. So motor one has this encoder attached to it and it can recognize that it has an encoder there. 
the bottom line represents encoder 2. So essentially it's telling you that it is an encoder on the second motor. You do need to make sure that the encoders are the right way, around, right way around. So make sure that whatever motor will be opening first, that will be motor 1. And also the encoder that's attached to it has two permanent red lights lit up on it. And the same for motor 2. So one on, when it's on motor 2, that's the gate that opens second. And the encoder on it will only have one red light on it at the time. You can basically identify it, say, just as bus. The second light on the encoder basically means I am encoder 1. Hence why it has two lights on motor 1 and one light on motor 2. You can now run motor 1 in dead map. So if I hold the plus button, it should open. And if I hold the minus button, it will enclose. This is where you now check to see if the motor is running correctly. If you have any erratic movement of the motor, then you should bleed the system. The next parameter is TL, which is time learning. Time learning on the E145S is very straightforward. I will demonstrate here using the time learning where the encoders themselves will tell the motor where to stop. So this is basically that assuming that there are physical stops in the motors. If there are no physical stops in the motors, depending on your motor configuration that you have, you can use the encoders to tell it where to stop. So what I'll do is we'll demonstrate on here how you do the setup the relatively straightforward way where the encoders will tell it where it is. To run the time learning, it's exactly the same process we use on E124. So dash dash, hold the plus and the minus together at the same time. Until you see S1 or state 1, and motor 1 will automatically start over. At this stage, simply let it carry on through. It will open motor 1 first, until it hits its physical stop. On this particular motor, we're actually using positive stops. Once the encoder sees no longer movement, it will then go to step two, which is motor two opening. So again, motor two is in the, is in the SA100, it has bits in physical stops. Again, it stops the scene moving. And then you have S3, step three. So gate two now begins closing. And now S4, which is a step four, which is motor one now begins to close. Again, the unit will automatically use the encoder to basically tell it to say that I've stopped moving, therefore I must be at my correct stop position. And then the display will automatically change to zero, zero if the setup was completed successfully. At this point, you can now use a button on here, or you can use a remote control if you already have one programmed in. If you're programming a remote control in, if you have the RP868, you program the receiver direct, the transmitter directly to the receiver. If you are using the XF, you program the buttons to either plus for button one for open A, or minus for um, button two for the, o for the open B partial opening command. For the purpose of this test, for this video, we are using a single button. So we press the button, the light comes on, and the gate begins to open. Now, the year already has a slow down position already set in place. We would adjust these in the second level programming, which will be covered in the E145S advanced programming video. Now it says 0, 01 because we are in semi automatic. Once I press the button again, the gate begins to close. First, with the closing delay of motor 2, followed on afterwards by the 400 wrap. Now we can also change the logic to automatic. So if I change, if I use the F button and scroll through to LO, And change this to an A, which will be automatic logic, I'll now have PA, pause time. So the default is 30 seconds, so the purpose of the video will bring it down to just 5 seconds. Then we can exit the programming, same way as we can do on the two 4 So if you hold F and press minus, it will skip straight to ST for status, Y to save any changes, and press F again to save. 
So I can now press the button again. Game will begin to open once more on 05. Except now, when it gets to the fully open position, instead of saying 01, semi uh, just saying it's open and semi automatic, it will now say 04 for pause time. And then count down and pause, and then it will automatically shut. Now it's 06. Again, we're closing the lane. And then the second, and then your first motor will begin to close afterwards. You will now go through and start configuring the rest of the system as desired. If you had bus beams, they could be wired across in parallel into the bus terminal. Or if you have standard classical beams, you can hardwire them in. And test to make sure that the operation is correctly. So at the moment, I've hardwired a photo cell in, which is acting on the closing safety. So if I press the button to open it, it has no effect as the gate is opening like a standard closing photo cell would be, but it will only have an impact when the gate's closing. Now we have 04 on the display, pause time. If I break this closing safety, the gate will stay indefinitely open for as long as I have the closing safety broken. And this is also indicated by the LED on the display also going off. Also on that point, I've also nudged the stop circuit. So the space changed to 01. I allow it to go back to normal and I'll test the closing safety as both gates are, open, are closing. As I broke the closing safety, the gates are reopened again. You will have 0 4 on the display again. Five seconds and then the unit will begin closing again. Now that we have encoded this, we can also program it in a slightly different way during the setup. So if I go down to the time learning, because the encoders are one degree accurate, we can tell it to actually stop in specific places. So if I go back to time learning, I will tell the units to stop at a particular place. So again, hold the plus and the minus together at the same time. Where the one starts to open, I can tell it to stop at a particular place. Pressing the button now. And I can do the same thing with motor 2 as well, or let motor 2 carry on through to the end of its travel, which I'll demonstrate on here. So you can mix the two together. But I will then be programming motor 1 with a button to tell it specifically stop at one place. Motor 1 begins to close. And now when I press the button, motor one only opens where I told it to stop. And it will do this every single time. Whereas motor two carries on opening according to the stop position set in the actual motor itself. Pause time again. and the board goes back to default to zero, 00 position. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video with us on the basic program of the E145S. Mm -hmm.